A wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat interesting discovery in regards to a massive structure in the Milky Way galaxy that apparently the solar system has passed through in the last 14 million years. And more importantly, there seems to be a connection with something that potentially happened right here on Earth. Something that might have even affected the climate on the planet and possibly caused an extinction event. And so let's talk about this new study about the mysterious Radcliffe wave once again. But here, let's actually start with the wave itself first, if this is the first time you're hearing about it. And by the way, the video in the description talks about the original discovery from back in 2020. But basically, approximately five years ago from when I'm making this video, scientists using Gaia telescope officially confirmed that there's a really bizarre structure that seems to form an unusual connection between a lot of famous molecular clouds known to us. And you can actually explore this structure in three dimensions by yourself by using one of the links in the description. Now the sun, as you can see, is right here, and this is the wave. The wave containing things like, for example, Orion molecular cloud, and actually 56 additional clusters, and various star-forming regions, which have been known to us for a very long time, but we just didn't really know that it's all part of the same structure. And so inside this wave, there are a lot of different, relatively dense clouds of gas, that is then compressed to form new stars, which is exactly how the solar system was born as well, approximately four and a half billion years ago. But interestingly enough, this is actually a really large structure. It's approximately 9,000 light years across, and it also seems to literally wave. This was actually confirmed relatively recently, and you can learn more about this in the video in the description. And so strangely enough, this wave contains a lot of star-forming regions, including the famous Orion complex, but also other famous regions like Perseus and Taurus, with Taurus actually being the closest to us, at approximately 400 light years. And basically, the overall environment inside this wave seems to be somewhat complex, way more dense, with the overall density of gas generally being much higher compared to some of the nearby regions. But we don't really know much else about this unusual red cliff wave, because first of all, I guess it's a recent discovery, but second of all, there's just not much else around it to even explain how it was formed. Now, one of the potential explanations involves some kind of an ancient galactic collision, but we just don't know which galaxy, but it could also have been formed as a result of a massive chunk of dark matter interacting with the galaxy as well. In other words, because this is a wave and because it's rippling, here some kind of a collision seems to be the best explanation. But it was really the exciting new discoveries from this study, the study by Maikoni on the solar system's passage through the Radcliffe wave, that kind of raise a lot of intriguing new questions. And so here, by using a lot of data from the Gaia telescope, and combining this with spectroscopic observations by other telescopes, in this case by using surveys like LAMOST and SDSS, researchers were able to actually determine the overall passage of the solar system in the last 30 million years, almost definitively confirming that approximately 14 million years ago, the solar system might have actually passed right through the wave and very likely extremely close to certain regions that were actually producing a lot of stars. And that's obviously because we know that everything in the galaxy is always moving around and is always shifting, as for example the solar system orbits the Milky Way at approximately 220 kilometers per second. And this was achieved by tracing the movement of 56 open clusters inside the wave, and then comparing this to the motion of the solar system in the same period of time. With the study confirming that the solar system passed through the Radcliffe wave, 18.2 and 11.5 million years ago, but the closest approach actually happened 14.8 and 12.4 million years ago. And what's actually interesting is that 14 million years ago, it basically looks like the solar system passed extremely close to, or possibly even through, the entire Orion star-forming complex, one of the most active star-forming regions that's existed for several million years. And because the environment in this region is much more dense, here the main assumption is that during this passage, all of the interstellar dust potentially created way more pressure on the Sun's heliosphere, possibly even decreasing it in size. But this would also increase the overall amount of interstellar dust in the solar system, increasing the overall amount reaching the planet, but also increasing the amount between Earth and the Sun. And here there's actually a somewhat intriguing implication from the study, but it's not something that can be proven yet. The implication that not only did this leave some kind of a geological record, that actually can be discovered in time, but has not been found yet. In this case, we're talking about, for example, various supernova that potentially happened nearby. 
Here, because the solar system was suddenly in a very different galactic environment, it possibly influenced the climate on the planet as well. And here researchers do propose one possible connection. The connection between this passage and the so-called Middle Miocene Disruption, MMD. The event that happened approximately 14 million years ago and eventually resulted in a growth of ice sheets in Antarctica. But more importantly, it's also connected to a somewhat prominent extinction event, which affected various terrestrial and aquatic life forms, which were doing really well millions of years prior. And specifically, they were doing really well during mid-Miocene climatic optimum, which was then followed by this unusual drop in temperature. This is when the climate was pretty warm, and this is when the tropics expanded quite dramatically, with the planet becoming super hospitable in a lot of regions, including Antarctica. But 14.8 to 14.5 million years ago, everything suddenly changed. And though this is not a causational relationship, or basically this is just a correlation, it just so happens that according to this study, this also seems to coincide with the passage through this Radcliffe wave extremely close to the Orion molecular cloud, with the implication being that maybe the extinction and the cooling of the planet are somehow connected to this Radcliffe wave event. But the thing is, we don't really know exactly what would happen and how this unusual cooling would be achieved. So, for example, when it comes to interstellar dust, in order for this dust to affect the planet and in order to produce the cooling we seem to observe, the density of dust and gas inside this wave would have to be a million times higher than what we actually observe right now in the solar system. But based on the observations we have so far, this doesn't seem to be the case. So if it did affect the planet, it probably had to be in some other way. But here, in order to provide more evidence, we would need more details from paleoclimatology, or basically the science of finding fossils that can show us what happened back in the days. Right now, there is no evidence for anything yet. I mean, for all we know, maybe there were actually a bunch of supernova nearby that could have caused a dramatic drop in temperature. But here, we would have to find signs of some kind of an isotope, like for example, iron-60, that would have to be in deposits from around this time. Once again, nothing has been discovered yet. Nevertheless, what the study suggests is that for millions of years, the solar system was actually passing through a lot of famous star clusters. For example, this gorgeous region you see right here, known as NGC 1977. Or this other region in the Orion molecular cloud, known as NGC 1980. And so because the solar system was relatively close to them, there might have been some effect on the heliosphere, and thus the effect on the planet. Which, if confirmed, would make this a really intriguing discovery. It would basically confirm that certain types of global cooling could have been caused by passages through various molecular clouds and could have affected the planet in ways we never knew before. Now, some of the previous papers actually already suggested that previous glaciation events might have been indeed caused by various molecular clouds and even potentially happen every 100 million years, but this new study provides the first potential evidence that there might be indeed some connection. Although the reality is that unless we actually have some kind of a model that can be then tested, it's still going to be a hypothesis for a very long time. Like I mentioned, one of the main reasons scientists don't actually think there was a direct effect is because you would need millions of times more dust in order to affect the planet so much that it actually starts cooling. And the current observations do not provide any evidence for any of this. Which kind of makes us a super exciting correlation and a very intriguing discovery, but not really an explanation for anything yet. Which is exactly where we have to leave it at. Here we cannot assume that some kind of a molecular cloud can dramatically affect the climate of planet Earth, and we can obviously not make any assumptions about the current climate change on the planet either. As a matter of fact, the scientists specifically mentioned that the human-driven climate change is incomparable and is happening on a timescale of decades as opposed to millions of years, like in this case. Still, a somewhat exciting discovery, and maybe a potential explanation for why Antarctica exists as an ice sheet and not as a continent filled with animals like millions of years ago. In other words, this potentially explains the large-scale glaciation of the entire Antarctica continent. But at least for now, that's kind of all I wanted to mention. We'll definitely come back and talk more about this because Radcliffe Wave is always super fascinating to talk about. But until future discoveries, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.